uh, how you tell I love Dion. Not the fact that I'm filming this video, but the fact that I'm wearing lipstick and it's like only 9.30 in the morning, which means I want to drink my coffee, but I can't until after I finish filming this so I can take it off. Uh, that's how you know I love you. Um, but yes, I love Dion. That's the point of this vlog. Basically, uh, if you saw the last month, my internet child, I've read a bunch of her favorite books and I had a good time. Um, kind of technically cry for Heartstopper and found a new favorite book. So that's fun. Um, and then I did it for H's birthday and Dion's birthday, not in October, but she chose October as her month. Um, this is Dion's month. And so here we are <laughs> reading a bunch of books uh thankfully some of them are physical uh and we're gonna have a good time i'm very excited about a few of them and i have already started reading one of them so that's the last one i'll talk about uh because i have some thoughts not many because like i'm only a few chapters in but i have some thoughts but yes that's what this is me reading a bunch of dion's favorites and or books she bought me <laughs> so i'm gonna end off with the one that I'm currently reading. So I'll start off with the other ebook, which I kind of want to dual read, which is uh, A Core of Mist and Fury, the second book in the Akatar series. I reread the first one for the Rose reading vlog, which was my birth month, which is fun. Um, which I originally had at one star, but the reread, I gave it four stars. So like, uh, and then for Core Mist and Fury, I originally had it two stars, so I'm excited to see if I up it. I know it's Dion's favorite in the series, so you know, um, it's a good time. My favorite Bat Boy, uh, as real shows up, I'm excited for him, and yeah, uh, I kind of want to dual read it because I only did the ebook the first time I read the whole entire series, so. The audiobook for Akatar is really good and then I could just sit there and annotate on my iPad so I kind of want to do that again and I think that will help increase my general feelings about the series so I'm gonna do that. That's one of the books. Uh, I kind of want to do that one soon maybe right after the one that I'm currently reading because uh getting the audiobook <laughs> is a fun time. Um, which is a shame because I have to push back the one that I currently want to read so bad. And that is Jane Eyre. <laughs> um, if you know anything about Dion, you probably know uh, Jane Eyre is one of her favorites by far. I've had this copy forever. Apparently this is a UK copy. What? Um, but yes, I've had this for a few years. I want to say... Either late 2019 or early 2020 when I bought it. Like, this is pre-COVID, okay? So, that's a fun time. Uh, but the I'm a classics bitch. And <laughs> the two classics I know uh, about Dion is Jane Eyre. I know she has multiple copies. She sent a photo and she had three copies in her hand. So, maybe she has three. Maybe she has more. I really like the small one she has set to, like, all floral. It matches my grandma aesthetic. It's fine. And Rebecca, only because Dion's actual name starts with an R. And so her sister bought her a book or bought her Rebecca just because it also starts with an R. I always, whenever she tells a story, I just picture the copy that just is an R on the front. And that's it. Like, that's the copy I always picture. But she hasn't read it. Um, but yeah, she loves Jane Eyre. I am so excited to read this. I haven't been this excited to read a classic since Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, which I read last year. Uh, I want to say late last year so you know I think I read it almost a year ago because I think it was book off the lathon uh last year and that just passed this year so like yeah no um it's a fun time I'm very excited I know it's gothic so perfect for the October vibes and uh she told me already that she warned me that it's not really romance. Uh, a lot of people go in expecting a romance. It's not really romance. Uh, so, and that's fine. I'm, I'm ready. I'm gonna sit there in my nice comfy chair, uh, drinking my tea for like six hours straight, only getting up to make more tea and just read this bad boy. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done that with a classic. 
Swim Sense and Sensibility actually. Um, and I'm very excited to get through her. And spoilers for my TBR uh, for November. But uh, next month I do plan to read Wuthering Heights. And so I have like my favorite classics in these nice collector special editions. And so I'm pretty sure they have a version that the Brontes, like all the Brontes into one. Like I have all the Jane Austens in one. I want, like if I like these, I may do all the Brontes in one and I get that one. So like, let's hope. Um, but yeah, this one I'm the most excited for. I'm gonna have a fun time. And then we can go into the one that she bought me uh, for my birthday. I know almost nothing about this. Um, I don't remember if she actually cried or if she just really was upset. Uh, because it's emotional it's thick but it's floppy i'll give her that it's like almost 500 pages of course she picked out a bunch of chonkers for me like girl we gotta have a conversation um but yes kings of the wild by nicholas ames uh one of these times i'll remember it uh i don't know when i'm going to read it exactly but you know that's fine I do know it's about a bunch of ex-mercenaries who, like, over time, uh, they've, like, separated and, uh, they've gotten old and some of them's that and time has passed, but something happens they have to regroup up again and as things ensue, uh, I think the character dies, I don't know. Helen, the book expert, uh, told me in the comments of my TBR video that the reason why the tagline on the top is the boys are back in town is because it's based off of 70s music i'm I'm down for that uh i don't listen to much 70s music personally i mean i don't listen to much music in general except for celine dion i did listen to celine dion just for dion last night but um yeah no i haven't listened to much 70s music maybe i'll just like find a playlist and listen to it but you yeah, know um i'm more of an 80s and 90s bitch so we'll see but yes i'm excited because i have not read much high fantasy uh or adult fantasy i want to get into adult fantasy because YA fantasy isn't doing it as much and so to like i gotta get into the adult fantasy world and like the ones uh push towards women of course are the ones that are like fairy smacks ones um and which is why like sometimes i'm into that but like sometimes i'm not and i just want a good old uh people stabbing each other fun time uh but like the only high fantasy or adult fantasy I read is Brandon Sanderson and that takes a lot out of me so like I need new adult fantasy to read uh so yeah that's gonna be fun because I need I need to be introduced to something uh then there's the short one uh that I have to clean off the cover of still it was on the top of my shelf because I'm running out of space for all my book the month books and you know it's fine i remember this one i can just take off my goddamn cover because it's so like short like uh that the dust jacket doesn't fit properly it just slides right off like you sometimes i have trouble with them where i have to like grip them a little bit or else they'll slide a little bit the heat just came out we're gonna ignore that um but no this one like even gripping it it like starts sliding and it it can just oh really earlier did it rude the moral of the story is the dust jacket doesn't fit it properly and it's really annoying and normally i take them off when i read anyways but still not fun time but i did buy this just for dion um i know when we first started talking and hanging out around the first one of the first few sprints i did uh she was talking about this book she had just finished it or she was in the middle of reading or something like that and she read it five stars originally it was like a thing where her heart said five but her head was like no nah, it's not five star worthy so then eventually she brought it down to i think a four but recently i saw her bring it back up to a five so but yeah i bought it just for her it came out in october 2021 according to the back so that's fun um this is about a witch who puts a hex or a hex on her ex <laughs> uh but then things go wrong and she has to go and fix it there is no flying broomstick according to Dion, but there is a cat. I'll take what we can get, honestly. Um, but yeah, she's small. I'm not like expecting amazing great things out of this. Uh, this is just gonna be like a palette cleanser, basically. 
because I am reading a lot of thickums um, for another video I have to read Pride of the Rune Tree. Like, she's thick. Uh, and also fantasy, uh, I think high fantasy. So like, I got a lot of uh, thick fantasies that I'm reading this month. So I need a palette cleanser and this is what the, <laughs> the point of this is um, mostly. So I can just take a day to be like my brain and just read fun romance for a day. I'm pretty sure I could totally read this in a day. It's 308 pages. I can totally read this in a day, but like, hear me out. The text is giant. The dust jacket keeps on wanting to come off. The text is giant. Like, I could do this easily, easily in a day. So, that's my palette cleanser book. Um, very exciting. And then we get to go into the one that I am currently reading, which is uh, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That title is so long, I only put half of it on my whiteboard because um, it went all the way to the other side. Fun. Um, but yeah, I'm only two chapters in. Like, I'm not that far in. I just started uh, part two. Uh, I did notice before, like, I started to read it that the title of the parts were titles of books uh, because part two of the title of that one is Helter Skelter. We all know that one because I read it a few months ago and I hated it. And then one of the last ones is in Cold Blood by Truman Capote, which I have also read previously. I think that I read that one last year uh, for a class. So, like, I knew that it was books and then I started to read it. And uh, based on the fact that the first part's book uh, is also the book that they're reading in the book club type situation. Uh, so I assume that's what's going on, uh, that title of the book relates to what book they're re reading and all that fun stuff. Uh, but basically it's about 90s housewives who, uh, like true crime. And then a weird guy shows up into town. The main character, uh, feels like her life's doing nothing. Um, her life's going nowhere. Her whole entire life is surrounded by making sure her weird family antics uh don't turn out with bad things happening basically uh and she used to be like a nurse like it mentions at one point that she used to be able to like hold an artery together with just her fingers and just like reach in and do it i don't know how realistic that is but like she used to be able to do that uh but not as much anymore like all she does is make sure uh her children don't accidentally die and that uh her mother-in-law doesn't accidentally fall down or something because like she's going crazy um I think she has Alzheimer's or some type of degenerative disease going on uh so she has to take care of all of them and also like all the housework and all this stuff so she feels like she's going crazy and then she joins this book club well she joined another book club <laughs> uh but like she never had time to finish the book and it was really boring and then no one read the book and then the leader of the book club was like how dare you you all are the worst and then they all just left it and they made their own book club reading books that they actually wanted to read uh that's what happened and they start switching it in and out between true crime and uh fiction like they read silence the lambs recently in it so that's fun um but yeah no they read these darker books uh, and then talk about life. They like she's formed a deep friendship. The whole entire first part is just two chapters, which takes the place in like five years, which is just their friendship growing, um, and them getting close and about her family. Uh, I don't know how Grady Hendrix does it because I've read one other Grady Hendrix, which is Horror Store. And like, there's this whole thing where he makes the atmosphere or the setting feel so real. And I don't know how, like Horror Store, I assumed it was just because uh, the way it was formatted was like an Ikea furniture, so I figured that was possibly why. But no, this one feels like uh, the 90s uh, in the suburbs and all this stuff. And I'm just like, in the South. And I'm like, I have absolutely no knowledge about this time or place, but like, it feels like it, okay? I really like his writing style because like, every once in a while, uh, like she's going through her life reading these books, making friends, uh, things are happening. I'm pretty sure children go start going missing soon because uh, he kept on talking about how the town was always safe. That's why they moved there because like nothing happens. Like people leave their front doors unlocked, all this stuff. 
uh and you can like just let your children outside to play and they'll come back when you call them type situation um but yeah no it's like a lot about paulina it's acronym uh just going through her life and then to like strengthen the idea that her life is crazy at home like one of her children it'll just randomly bring up an antic that one of her children does like her daughter Corey uh decided she didn't like her freckles so putting a bunch of lemon juice all over her face and getting it in her eyes like that's just a random thing that happens at one point uh so you know that's fun but yeah no she's got this friendship and I'm loving the friendship so far like I'm having a good time and uh Dion has warned me about this one too she said that it's not actually vampires which is fine like horse star wasn't actually really ghosts so like I'm down um I'm excited to read it it's gonna be a good time I'm so far really liking it I mean I'm not that far into it I got to the point where it said Helter Skelter I took a screenshot and sent it to the group chat and said how dare you and then uh I put it down last night so like I haven't gone that far but I'm excited uh I'm assuming the antagonist is gonna show up who they assume is the vampire um I think based on the synopsis he comes into town they're like weird guy weird and then children start going with and they're like well if you connect the dots it's him uh but then like Paulina starts a thing with him like romantically or like she's into him or something like that like I don't know what's going on with that but that's what the synopsis say because I actually read it but yeah, uh, that's the five books I'm reading for October month, or Dion month. There we go. Uh, so it's going to be a good time. I'm excited for a lot of these. Most of these I'm really, really excited for. So I'm going to have a fun time uh, reading through some chunky books. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's the plan for this month. And yeah, uh, I'll come and update you either when I'm halfway done with Southern Book Club's Guide to Stunning Vampires or when I'm done with it, one of the two. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you then. Hello, I don't know how long it's been. I think it's like been four days. It's Thursday the 6th. So yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and I just finished The Grady Hendrix, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> um, and I've been addressed in the middle of October with I haven't washed my hair in forever but I'm on sprints uh hair so like a lot's happening um but I finished it it was really dark at moments um thankfully I took the trigger warnings first because it's dear god but yeah um it was dark at moments uh and is the dog gonna come on camera no um it was dark at moments uh but I don't think it really took away from my enjoyment because like the way the book made me feel uh especially anger I just all the white men especially at one point when uh all the women are like hey this guy's suspicious and all the white men are just like or all their husbands are like you're all just crazy um yeah no um especially the gaslighty ways of like Patricia's husband Carter we don't we don't like him listen when the kids choose her over him at the end I'm just like yes thank you um I just messaged that in the group chat and Dion just liked it so like I think she agreed with me um because like Carter not the greatest guy uh cheating on his wife um doing all this stuff never believing his wife uh gaslighting her emotionally abusing her um I don't know if it's straight up emotional abuse but like it's suspicious um I don't think I'm gonna keep all of what I just said in but basically the moral of the story was screw Patricia's husband um we're proud of her for the end of the book um and yeah it was a, it was good it was dark at moments definitely really really dark uh and heavy but like the way that it made me feel was the point so I'm fine with it uh it, it just it was a lot at points let's go with that uh a lot of different like interesting uh conversations i love mrs green uh thank you very much she is the greatest she just seems like a nice lady okay like we we support her um and that's that 
like it's a good time uh screw carter most of their husbands honestly and um james harris that's the moral of the story <laughs> um but yeah i'm going with four stars it definitely was well written i really liked how it was written in general uh so yeah go grady hendrix for that maybe i'll finally pick up uh the final girl support group i don't know if i'll ever read my best friend's exorcism that one i'm on the fence with but final girl support group is one of his that i've wanted to read for a bit now since like it came out and so maybe i'll finally pick it up because I, I really like this one i read it the same that i read horror store so like yeah uh four stars and that's that uh i am on a break this weekend from this walk because part of the orange tree um i'm always slightly scared but when i get back uh when i get back <laughs> after this weekend after i finished that book i did just get the court of mr fury uh the audiobook from the library so i'll do that one next and then i'll go into maybe jane eyre maybe xx i don't know which one maybe i'll end with jane eyre i don't want to end with jane eyre though this is the real issue <laughs> uh but yes that is the plan basic plan immediate plan and so i guess we'll see you next week hello it has been a week um both in the sense that it's been a week <laughs> <clears throat> um we don't need to talk about that uh but also like it's actually physically been a week and we're gonna ignore this on the dishwasher because i need to update um because it's been a week um i took longer reading party than planned so i started recording mr fury later than planned we don't need to talk about it um but i am reading it now it's friday I, I, did I mention that? Who knows? It's Friday. Uh, and tomorrow I gotta start reading Blood Promise uh, for the other weekend reading vlog. So I should, I, I, I kind of have to finish the Crime Mystery Theory uh, today for that to work out. Um, but that's fine. Uh, one, because I've read it before. So uh, I'm reading it much faster than the first time when I actually read it. I'm at 30% uh i got that far last night um and it's a good time uh but also like audiobook um so you know all that fun stuff so i can listen to it at three times speed and not have any issues uh definitely not the same issues i require um but uh you know i'm reading it i was talking to dion about it yesterday because we were playing games um and we were <laughs> talking about it Cause like obviously this is the vlog for dion um and this is her favorite book in the series she was contemplating st starting to reread it i'm like do it i'm reading it right now uh let's go ham um and so we were talking about it and how uh why i think i didn't like it the first time <laughs> this is a whole thing um the first time i read akatar i rated it in order uh first second and third book one two three stars <laughs> um i reread actor in may uh and i rated it four stars i don't expect a Christmas and fury being above four stars which is fine um i'm happy with that though so like uh with this reread but that's that i'm fine with that but let me explain why I think I like it better the second time around. Because I thought maybe it was the annotating while reading while also listening to the audiobooks type situation. But I'm not annotating and reading along for this one. So, like... Um, it's, it doesn't seem to be that. Maybe it's just audiobook in general, because uh, I know... A lot of people prefer one way or the other and i think i'm preferring the series as audiobooks um the narrator is doing a great job like i'm having a good time but all that said i think the reason why there's like a bunch of reasons um 
but I, back when I read it in like 2020, I had just seen like a bunch of videos and stuff that were hyped up that hated on the books. It was very much, it gives me Twilight vibes where like there's the people who enjoy the books and the series and then there's the people who like really hate it and sometimes are toxic about their hate for the book. And those were the one videos that I was recommended on booktube. So were, those were the ones I like went into the book knowing their opinions of. So I already went in with a negative viewpoint. Um, so that's fun. And also knowing a good chunk of the plot points, which was not smart, but we don't need to talk about that. But also back in 2020, I was not as much of a character based or um, a character's analysis type reader. I was more of a plot driven reader back then, which like the plot of the Akatar books is fine. It's like not amazing or anything, it's just there. But if you go into these books with a mindset of like analyzing these characters, their emotions, their thoughts, their reasonings, all this stuff, especially Feyre, these books are like really good. <laughs> um, I don't know why I prefer it that way, but I do. Um, I didn't start doing that though until like really early this year so you know it's probably like something to do with the timing and all that stuff but yeah uh, I'm, I'm liking it better the second time around um my boy Asriel has popped in now I'm having a good time he's my bat boy okay everyone has their favorite bat boy mine's Asriel uh where's my Asriel book please Sarah J Mass where and that's the moral story um anyways I'm gonna finish today um and you know I really have to stop saying when I'm gonna update you because no matter I think I like went into Priory at one point with like a whole entire plan and I said it and I ended up cutting out like 50 seconds of me talking about it because none of that happened so I should really stop doing that but I'm gonna do it still and that's purely because at some point tomorrow I am going to have to sit down and talk about blood promise so if I'm already here with my phone set up to film and all that stuff I should just like film the update so I uh will update you tomorrow hopefully before noon we'll see um when I go to do the intro for that vlog so you know that's the fun time what is my hair doing nobody knows uh and yeah that's the play um remember when I said I wanted to read Jane Eyre super early on <laughs> then life said screw you um I don't know what the next book after Aquarius and Fury that I'm going to read next is. It really depends how Blood Promise goes. Because if it really hits me, I may just go and do X Hex for like a a like little um, easy read, fast, easy, just sit down one day and read it. Have a good solid time. Take a break from all these heavy books. Because uh, based off of Dion's reaction through some of the other ones I'm, I'm gonna need the break I'm gonna need the break so that's the plan that isn't actually really a plan and I'll see you tomorrow okay so I know I said I was gonna try to finish Aquarius Mr. Berry and I totally could have done it I think I had like six hours left with three times speed uh if I listened while I played Overwatch but I was listening to Celine Dion while hanging out with Dion it's fine. We did talk about the book a bunch. Um, and the moral story is Nest is the worst. I think I got like 57%. I don't know. It could jump the way through. Uh, but now take a break because we can read vlog. If I didn't get the audiobook for uh, the book for it, um, I probably would have continued to listen to it in moments when I could listen to an audiobook, but I managed to get the audiobook of that one. So, um, in the meantime, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna read this one and then once I finish it, I'll start back up. And I think even if it takes me all the way through Monday to read this one, um, uh, I'll still have a few days left of the audiobook before I have to be to return to the library. So, I think I should be fine like it shouldn't be that big a deal okay so um this is gonna be fast because i have like five minutes left in these prints because it's been a week and i'm doing 24 hour sprints uh but i just finished book. but first uh in the meantime i did mostly listen to a 
quite a bit of fairy. But um, first I'm going to talk about, uh, I did start Kings of the Wild uh, reading pages while I wait for games to load. Uh, I only read the first two chapters, about 16 pages. It's fine. I'm intrigued so far. Uh, now that I know it's like based off of uh, rock bands, uh, some of the language is funny. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I got for that. Uh, one of the main characters' name is Rose. Her nickname's Bloody Rose. Uh, the whole entire premise of the book based around something that Rose does. Uh, the sequel is called uh, Bloody Rose, and the second chapter is titled Rose. It was a little weird, just saying that for my thing. Um, during the 24 hour sprints, I am gonna try to read the XX. I already took off the dust jacket. Um, so, uh, I may update you tomorrow with that, but we'll see. Uh, but A Quarter Mystery Theory. I finished it, finally. It took me long enough. Uh, but yeah, the urge to not instantly continue because I just want to read about her secretly being in the Supreme Court. Uh, or her being in the Supreme Court secretly still in love with recent, like, that whole part was my favorite part of the whole entire series. But I finished A Quarter Mystery Theory. Uh, but yeah, I was right before she was, uh, um, yeah. It, um... It, it's good it, uh, I like it better this time I think because I'm more into character based books now than I was two years ago when I originally read it that may be a good portion why uh and yeah I mean yeah I knew everything that was gonna happen so I was just sitting there waiting but it was still a good time to listen to it while I did other things uh like making chili or playing video games and I get why it's Dion's favorite. I mean, I'll probably rate the third one when I reread it, hopefully, possibly, this month if I have time. Uh, four stars as well. And I'm also on the wait list for A Course of the Flames, but the, like, <laughs> the wait list for that is like 18 weeks or something. It's not gonna happen this year. Uh, but yeah, I think the audiobook for me wise is the way to go. I didn't even like annotate an ebook as I was reading uh, via audiobook this time, like I did with Avatar, but uh that's fine like I had a good time in the audiobook I, it's much more drove personally that way it's fun um I don't know what else to say so uh I'll just I'll just leave it off and uh say I'll update you if I get anywhere in x-hex I don't know if I'm gonna get to it if I do when I may not update you at all when I'm reading it I may just update you once I finish it that's like a high possibility uh but it's like pretty short so like it's fine uh and yeah so uh one way or another i'll probably see you when i finish that or kids of well one of two whichever one first well um it's been a while and we have the second i think time not in this vlog but like in this month that of like changed filming locations and whatnot but that's fine um can we guess that i didn't read any of it during the 24 hours for uh i i read lots of other things but i did finish it earlier today uh i read most of it yesterday i think i had like something like 70 pages left but like by that point it was like 11 30 i was like i just want to go to bed um so i finished it this morning I already uh, got Dion's reaction to me rating it three stars. Hear me out. So, uh, I didn't get like any of the chemistry from Vivi. Vivi? I think like it's short for Vivian, so I'm just gonna go with Vivi and Reese. I got like maybe 2% chemistry from them, okay? uh and furthermore there was like basically no character growth from Reese like he's still the same type of person uh like he's at this point recognized that that's not how he needs to act in this relationship and whatnot but he hasn't officially changed he's like yeah I'm gonna be that way but like by the end uh but like it's fine because like he made the big gesture I don't know um which I guess it's fine because she didn't really change that much in the relationship either. Uh, she changed personally 
and by that I mean with the only relationship I care about which is her relationship with magic <laughs> I don't even care about magic in general I care about her relationship with magic which we saw in like little glimpses and most of that was uh like her relationship from her past her mother was a witch but like never used magic um and was very much afraid of her afraid of it um and what it could mean so like the first time she accidentally used magic when she was a child uh she freaked out at her and ever since Viv uh vivian <laughs> i should just call her vivian because vivi's gonna be um but vivian has had like a weird relationship has a relationship with magic like she'll use it to do little things like heat up her tea without using microwave and whatnot but like that's about it um like the curse that starts the whole entire book and the stuff that she does at the end is about the extent of all her magic like those are the big things she does otherwise she doesn't use it much in her life just because that was the way she was raised um but then like eventually uh she was taken in by her aunt who uses re magic regularly as well as her cousin and so like in comparison it's very interesting um and then also she teaches on a campus where magic is like a thing like for normies they don't know but like there's like this whole section on campus where you uh learn about magic and you go to like magic school and whatnot and like she teaches human classes uh like human history on the campus and the witches on the magic side are kind of very distant we don't really learn the background why it's just know that they are and like that whole entire thing about how like there was this one girl who was using magic and she didn't even know she had magic because she was like how are you sure you're a witch like i've never seen you use magic like her whole entire relationship with magic was so much more interesting and it was barely there and yeah that's the moral of the story um my main emotion throughout all of this is i'm bored and i don't think that's anything against the book or anything uh i i just think i didn't feel like the chemistry so it was an interesting read for me in general uh i don't know if i'll pick up this sequel i don't think so uh gwen wasn't really my favorite but like i'll see um but yeah, I get why people like this, but I also get why a lot of people don't like it because it does have very low ratings on Goodreads. So I can see both sides of it. Um, I'm just right up in the middle of just like whatever <laughs> with it. And um, yeah, so uh, I assume my divorce papers from Dion will come in soon. On the other uh, end, I do also plan to finish this today. Uh, you can see my book part dangling. Um, yeah, uh, this is a chunker though. This is 200 pages more than the X Hex, and I didn't read that all in one day. And I'm only—I was only 16 pages into this before today. Also, uh, for Dion, here, let me put a normal bookmark in here so I can show this because I think the dangly one will be annoying. Yes, I still have my normal one up here. We don't need to talk about it. Um, because I mentioned, uh, I said that it's floppy, and she said it wasn't supposed to be because she bought it for me. Uh. And so, um, here's the physical proof that it's floppy. It's very floppy. It's like my mass market paperbacks, um, paper-wise for Brenda Sanderson. Um, those books have very thin paper and this one does too. Um, but this is way loosely bound. Like, I'm pretty sure this is about the thickness of the bigger one of those, of the Mistborns. They're like 800 pages or something. And this is 500 pages. So, like definitely looser bound and um floppy so yeah i'm having a good time with that but also i love the characters um i'm laughing i cackled at one point um it was the second time a few of the characters uh two of the characters had been robbed by the same group of female uh raiders bandits um whatever you want to call them uh thieves uh and the other group because they i think they've gotten two other members uh since then so the two of them didn't know them before those two had previously been robbed by them and they were robbed and then the girls like fed them breakfast and all of them were like oh they're so nice they gave us breakfast and everything and then he's like 
you're fucking crazy. And I was laughing. I was having a good time. Um, I just messaged D on this, but Moog, who is the wizard, but also, I don't know if he's particularly good at magic, but like, a lot of things he does uh, don't work out as expected. So, um, love him. And then also the main character, Clay, which is kind of expected being as he's the main character and we're in his head. Um, he's the one narrating it. So, kind of expected. Like, occasionally, uh, in, in Talix, you'll get his thoughts every once in a while in reactions to things. And I'm like, yeah, fun. Um, but I am 30% of the way through, about a third now. And it's, it's good. I like it. It's well written. It's fun. Um, I'm also, I found the audiobook, so I'm listening to it at the same time. And the narrator, I recommend, oddly enough, I mean, I do like reading it physically, but oddly enough, I am going to recommend the audiobook because the narrator does like different voices for all the characters and it's a good time. I don't know who narrates it, but I'm having a good time with this, okay? Um, but basically, because I actually know something about it now, um, unlike when I filmed the intro to this forever ago, um, basically it's this x-band of mercenaries um i feel like that's like the one thing i knew and gabe was kind of the leader um and whatnot and so he shows up to where clay now lives with a wife and daughter and all this stuff and gabe's daughter uh ended up creating her own bandit um they call her bloody rose listen the second chapter is called rose the second book is called bloody rose uh they say the name rose a lot because it's basically the whole premise is them going to find rose we're gonna ignore my fridge turning on um yeah it's weird hearing my name a bunch but you know we're gonna ignore it it's like when i listen to the audiobooks of vampire academy books okay um but basically he shows up uh obviously been going through it and he's all like hey uh you know that town that uh had a bunch of like creatures attack it and then a bunch of mercenaries were paid to go out and take care of it and then now the whole entire city is captured or whatever it is is captured and they're all gonna die basically um and then uh yeah apparently bloody rose went and so now she's captured and uh now they're slowly getting the band back together to go save her um and like one of the guys had like opened up a wizard shop or something and is trying to cure this disease that's Mook, obviously. I love him. Uh, and then there's, I don't even remember his name. Is it, it's something like Matt or something. Matrick, there we go. Um, like became a king. So like they, they thought it was going to be difficult to get him to join them. Um, and then there's another guy they're going to get now. I believe uh, they just saw the like city or whatever it is through a magic ball. Things are not looking good. Also, uh, there's like to get there, they gotta through go through this area that has a lot of monsters, and the guy who was controlling the beasts that are gonna attack the city or whatever, um, kind of an enemy of Gabe. So you know, uh, that's a thing. And also, uh, there's bounty on Gabe and Clay's head now. So like, a lot of things are happening, and I'm having a good time. Uh, it's unexpectedly funny for a book with a lot of violence and gore and whatnot and i'm having a good time i mean how much i was gonna say i'm having a good time um if i could guess what i'm gonna rate it now a four maybe i don't know uh i mean i'm only i'm not even a third in yet just barely though um but yeah that's that's what's happening uh i plan to finish this today tonight at some point i don't want to do the math to figure out how much more i have in the audiobook so i'm not going to uh but last i checked i had something like three and a half hours so uh yeah that it seems like very doable especially since it's only 4 p.m now and i uh will hopefully I'm not going to say I will because I never actually update when I say that I'm going to update. But I hopefully will update tomorrow with thoughts on this. And then I'll start Jane Eyre. We don't need to talk about her. Um, but yeah. 
I'll see you when I update you about this. Okay. Um, <laughs> normally at this point, I talk about the last two books because I read both of them. Uh, give like a general what's going on with those uh, ratings, talk a lot about those books, and then do a general rundown for the vlog and end it. And that was the plan. And then an hour after I woke up, like, life just decided, hey, screw you. <laughs> So this is gonna be quick um there may be cutouts because things are happening uh but i wanted to film this as soon as possible so i could edit this as soon as possible so in case things more things happen i can deal with them <laughs> and not have to worry about this so excuse my future rambling uh but yeah i i finished i finished both of them um yeah uh last I filmed was Wednesday, which was the day that I was reading this. I had just finished XX and I think I was a third of the way through Kings of the Wild. Um, yeah, I did finish it that day, <laughs> which basically means I read the whole entire thing because before that I had only read 16 pages. So I basically read this whole entire book plus like the last 70-ish pages of XX. So we love that for me um before i forget to mention it uh dion the namesake for this whole entire vlog uh did make a bookstagram like i think thursday <laughs> uh or was that wednesday wednesday thursday one of those two it was like me being like hey i'm about to <laughs> page off that vlog let me promote it and then she said sure um and the only reason i just remember this is because the name of it which will be in the description along with all her other social media, of course, um, is The Wild Air, wild spelt as Kings of the Wild, Air is in Jane Eyre. Uh, these are the last two books I read for this vlog, which was not planned like that. I meant to read this much earlier. But yeah, um, I read this. It was <laughs> so funny. Um, I have a trouble with fight scenes in fantasy books. Uh, trying to picture everything but I didn't really have that issue in this one I mean you expect it because like it kept on like name dropping uh the characters we had never seen before or creatures we had never seen before and all this stuff but I still didn't have like at least trouble knowing where the characters were what they were doing um and yeah it was a fun time I mean I expected them to find rose because the next book is called bloody rose uh and i do plan to read that at some point i don't know when that's gonna happen but i do want to read it and mook is still great uh clay is still great i still love him some things happened uh there was a hot moment when i actually was scared <laughs> for all the care i was like actually like oh my god are they actually gonna die like imagine um but yeah it was funny it was a good time uh and i'm going with 4.5 stars and that's that uh i said it was gonna be fast uh similarly jane Eyre, i read all of this yesterday did i mean to split it up between yesterday and today yes but then i was like hey hot take i was reading it fast enough just with my eyeballs um, I did calculate it because I was doing about, I think, just under two minutes per page, uh, which is normal for a class for me, especially since the font is, like, size two. Um, so, like, that's normal for me. And I calculated it with the amount of pages there are. Like, I could have done it in two days with just my eyeballs. It wouldn't have been that difficult. But then I got, uh, I procrastinated a bit with Doctor Who. It's fine. We don't need to talk about it. And then, uh... I decided, hey, hot take, what if I read all of it so tomorrow I can read Dragon Smart? Which has absolutely nothing to do with this vlog. Uh, so that's like the Loki plan. I'll, I'll try to get some of that read if life doesn't want to straight up destroy me anymore. Uh, but yeah, I've read this in one day. Currently, the only thing ran on my Goodreads for this is we're not talking about how I read this in one day. We're really not. Uh, I did get my hands on that audiobook. I did not plan to do the audiobook. I planned to just read it by myself, but I did like the audiobook. The narrator did a pretty good job. Uh, she did slightly different voices for other characters, but not many. Um, 
and honestly all I can say about this is the drama um it was like low-key drama but like nothing crazy until the part with the wedding like halfway through and I was like excuse me I would say it but at least like kind of a spoiler so I was like uh-huh excuse me what and I was just there like the drama and then the next chapter was hella long um of just explanation and then like she goes through all the stuff and then I was like what are the chances that there are two people named John like probably there's a higher chance that there's two people named John uh and it's not like her uncle that these people are talking about this makes no sense unless if you've read it um but yeah no I didn't actually laugh but the whole time I was just there like the drama and having a great time and I'm also rating this one 4.5 look at these bad boys um I honestly expected this one to be pretty high now I gotta reread Pride and Precious because that one's like currently sitting at a four and that's like still my favorite classic so you know um yeah but this was a good time I get, I get it. I knew I was going to love it as soon as I read it. I just didn't manage to pick it up until now. And I low-key want to annotate it. Which is hilarious because I know Dion's planning to annotate it. Uh, I don't know at this moment. But like at some point soon. So there's that. Uh, but yeah. I I finished her. Um, and I love it. And yeah. That's that's it. That's the moral of the story. Um okay quick really basic rundown uh and then i'm gonna end off the vlog so the first book i read for it was southern book club's guide to first sighting vampires which the title is still way too long uh but four stars i still think about parts of it um every once in a while in fact the other night i went to bed and i was like hey remember my brain was like hey remember that one scene i went god yes i do please get out of my head um but yeah it was a good time i do have one other grady hendrix on my tbr and i may uh think about reading my best friend's exorcism i don't know about that one but still it was a fun time i do like his writing style so i'll be sure to have an eye out for any future of his books and yeah i get i get why people don't like it and i also get why people like it and I'm on the liking it spectrum. Uh, the second one was technically a reread of A Court of Mystic Theory, which is hilarious because I just saw Dion uh, start to reread Akatar for apparently the fifth time uh, earlier this morning when I woke up. That was like a thing on my Goodreads. So that's fun. Uh, but yeah, I originally had rated it two stars. Now it's sitting at a four star. I think audiobooks are the way to go for me now at this point for that series. In fact, I'm on the wait list for Course Over Flames, <laughs> which is an 18 week wait. Um, the urge to pick up A Quarter of Wings and Ruin instantly was very strong, especially since I love the beginning of that book. And I do have it from the library. I do have the audiobook because it was available. So like, there may be a chance that may fit it in this month. If not this month, it's definitely beginning of next month. So that's a thing um we're very surprised uh but yeah we're loving it for me um and moral of the story four stars uh and then we get the book that i rated lowest for this vlog all of these are four stars or higher except for this one which is the xx um which in my defense it's a romance and i didn't care about the romance at all uh, I get why people don't like it, which is, I assume, the same reasons why I didn't like it. I get people who liked it, uh, which I assume are people who actually felt the chemistry and did care about the romance. It wasn't, like, poorly written or anything. I just didn't have a good time, or as good as a time as I expected, but I still did what it wanted, which was it was a palate cleanser. It was a quick romance. Um, I'm not mad that I read it. I didn't dislike it but I also didn't love it so solid three um and that's that and then of course Kings of the Wild and Jane Eyre both I technically read in like one day each I don't understand how my brain did this um 
but that's fine. Both these are 4.5 stars. And if you're looking for more high fantasy or, I mean, I'm trying to get into high fantasy. So this was like a good beginning one. Uh, definitely recommend this one. Uh, the audiobook was great. 10 out of 10 for the audiobook. Uh, but even that is pretty fast read without the audiobook. And then this one, if you want a good gothic classic, uh, I recommend this one. Go for the audiobook if you want to. I There's like 10 bajillion different versions of the audiobook. So I'm not going to say if the audiobook was good or not. Because the chance if you find the same exact one as I did is very low. But uh, yeah, I liked it. So 4.5 for that one as well. And that's that. That's the end of the vlog. <laughs> uh you do the outro now um link below the first thing would be all of Dion's socials including her twitch her main instagram and her new, very brand new bookstagram uh very exciting very exciting and then below that will be all the mentioned vlogs uh including but not limited to the rose reading one for when i reread the first book in Akatar and uh the first part in this when i reread or i've read age's favorites um and i think that's it i think that's everything i mentioned no my birthday haul i thankfully already edited the intro to this so i know that i mentioned my birthday haul video because uh one i bought myself this book in that video but also that's why I own this book because Dion bought it for me so quite literally uh this is I think the only book I have labeled as gifted on my tracker uh because she gifted it to me for my birthday so that will also be linked below and then after that is all my social media uh which includes my Instagram Goodreads and Storygraph I do post reviews on all three so if you want to see my reviews you don't have to like choose a specific one but if you want to know what I rate books for vlogs before the vlogs come out I do do little stories on Instagram as well as things such as book trackers every Friday and uh favorites of the month so that's a thing um and yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go try to edit this as fast as possible uh, and deal with the chaos that is life. So thank you for coming to this vlog. And I'll see you in the next one. Which, if I have timed out properly, is going to be my TBR for November. Mm -hmm.